Okay, so now we're going to start exercise 1.2, creating Windows deployment images. In this exercise, you're going to prepare images, boot images, and install images that will be used to deploy Windows. In the previous video, I said that we were going to be doing all of these, and this, this is actually what we're going to accomplish throughout all of Lab 1. Um, in exercise 1.1, we created a new server, installed it, configured Windows Deployment Services so that you can quickly install Windows servers in the future. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is click on our Windows Explorer here and go into our C drive, our root, and we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this folder software and then enter. Now we want to copy some of the files from our domain controller. And I don't have all those files on the domain controller so I'm going to have to minimize server 1 to make sure I have them all. Here's my domain controller. I'm going to go ahead and open up, I'm going to minimize this, open up my folder, software. Okay, so we have the, this is actually the wrong file. Um, you need to make sure that you have the x64 bit. So I'm going to need to get rid of this. All right, I'm going to minimize this and go into my software folder on my live machine. And here is my, oops, no, I'm going to go ahead and keep that. So I need to copy this and copy this. While that's working, I want to make sure I have connectivity to my domain controller from my live machine. So I'm going to go into network. And even though you don't necessarily see it, if you click on your slash slash rwdco1 and then software, and it does pull it up, this is a good sign. So I'm going to move this over, go back into my software folder. Okay, so the first file I want to get is copy the... This one right here, the Windows 8.1 KB2901549 64bit.msu. So I'm just going to drag that over here. <clears throat> and then as soon as this is done copying, I'm going to drag this over. Now, when I went through the getting the, the all the software required for this, I put them in individual files because, as you can see, some of them have kind of weird looking names. This is just NM34x64. If I wasn't already familiar with it, I would have no idea this is from my Microsoft network monitor, but if you see NM, it's like, okay, duh, network monitor. That one's labeled okay. But um, during the instructions, it'll actually ask for the update. Or it'll tell you to um, use this, but this is what it's uh, referred to in the lab setup. It's actually re referred to the update for IE11 server. And then Windows ADK is just a ADK setup. 
All right, so we're done copying, so I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, God, no, we're not done copying. I need to copy over my server standard. And I'm going to close out of these, move this over, and go ahead and open up my server 01. <coughs> All right, so I'm gonna go into my network. And this lab is supposed to take about 20 minutes, so we will see. Okay, here's my domain controller software folder, and I am on server one. And as soon as it's done copying, I will go ahead and copy both this and this. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and select both of these. Control C, go to this PC, C drive, software, Control V. And I'm going to close out of my, no I'm not, I have to wait for this to get done so I can right click on my Windows server. And while this is finishing that, what I am going to do is go into my Hyper-V. <clears throat> One of the things I like about Hyper-V is that we can create restore points. And it's always good, or a checkpoint, to do that. This way, if we make a mistake, we can always go back to that checkpoint. And then as soon as this is done copy, I'll create a checkpoint of server 1. Okay, so now we're going to right click and mount, and you'll see that it mounted to our E drive. So I'm going to go to my Word document here that answers the next question. What drive letter was the ISO file mounted to? It mounted to the E drive. Okay, from the Windows Deployment Console, so I'm going to close out of this for a moment, go back to my Windows Deployment. Uh, we already have servers expanded. We already have server 1 Contoso expanded. We can see the install images folder and the boot images folder over here. 
So we're going to add a boot image. So we're going to right click, add boot image. And then the add boot image wizard opens up. We're going to click on browse. And we're going to click on this PC. And then scroll down to our E drive. Click on sources. And there it is. We're going to select the boot.wim and then click on open. And then click on next. And then next. Here's the summary page. And next. And once this is done, we're going to click on finish. <clears throat> okay, and now we're going to right click on the install images folder. And again, add. So I'm going to do it over this way. Right click, add install image. And we're going to create an image group named image group one. And next. And again, we're going to browse. And now this time we're going to do the install.wim. Again, it was referring back to our E drive. And then open, and then next. Now if you expand these, you can see what these are. Here we have server standard core, server standard, server data center, server, I'm sorry, server data center core, server data center. So the difference between the standard and the center versus the cores is that the core is just the command line this one and this one is a GUI. So the only one that we want to keep for right now is the server standard. But you'll see in some of the exercises we actually work within command line. That's to get you comfortable with working with that in case you're working in with a company who only has the core being used. And that reduces the amount of resources that they have to have. All right, let's click on next and next. Time-wise, we're only about 10 minutes in. It's not bad. So you're supposed to be a 20-minute lab.
Okay, I'll go ahead and click on finish. This brings us to step 19, and, and that is to take a screenshot of the <clears throat> Windows Deployment Services Add Image Wizard page. Again, you're not using it if you're in my class. All right, so that's the end of this exercise. And we will go on to exercise 1.3, which is generating an automated an auto on a 10.xml file on the next video. Although first I want to do circle one. I want to go ahead and create a checkpoint. So now I have a checkpoint of each of my machines at this point. Alright, now I'll go ahead and stop the video and we'll see you in the next video.